The Florida Historical Society presents Florida Frontiers is made possible in part by the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund and by... The historic Rossiter House Museum and Gardens is in the O'Galley section of Melbourne, Florida. Preserved as it was in the early 20th century, historic tours of the Rossiter House include antiques, artifacts, and family heirlooms, and the 1865 Houston Family Cemetery. The last resident of the home was successful businesswoman and philanthropist Caroline P. Rossiter. The historic Rossiter House Museum and Gardens is available for weddings and other special events. The Department of State Division of Cultural Affairs, the Florida Council of Arts and Culture, and the State of Florida. In 1954, at the Florida Folk Festival in White Springs, Billy Bolegs III sang the Alligator Dance, representing the Seminole Tribe and all of the indigenous people of Florida who came before them. Welcome to Florida Frontiers, presented by the Florida Historical Society. I'm Ben Broatmarkle. On this special episode of the program, we'll be looking at Florida history as it's expressed in Songs of the Sunshine State. The song Seminole Wind has been recorded by Native American singer Shea, folk rock musician James Taylor, and the man who wrote the song, country artist John Anderson, a native of Apopka, Florida. Seminole Wind is performed here by the Jacksonville Children's Chorus under the direction of Darren Daly.
Although he had never visited Florida, Stephen Foster used the name Suwannee River in his song Old Folks at Home, which he wrote for a minstrel show in 1851. Written from the perspective of an enslaved person, Old Folks at Home became the official state song of Florida in 1935. The controversial lyrics to the song, which romanticized slavery, were revised by the Florida legislature in 2008. That same year, while keeping Old Folks at Home as the official state song, the Jan Hinton song, Florida, Where the Sawgrass Meets the Sky, was designated as the official anthem of the state of Florida. Author Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings lived among Florida pioneers known as crackers, documenting their lives in books including Cross Creek and South Moon Under. Her novel The Yearling earned the Pulitzer Prize in 1939 and was adapted into a popular film in 1946. Michael Leonard and Herbert Martin staged a Broadway musical version of The Yearling in 1965. Although the musical only had three performances on Broadway, Barbara Streisand recorded four songs from the show, including Why Did I Choose You?
Florida writer Zora Neale Hurston is best known for her classic 1937 novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God. A trained anthropologist, Hurston also collected African-American folk tales, resulting in nonfiction books, including Mules and Men and Tell My Horse. She also documented Florida songs like Shove It Over. This song is called Shove It Over, and it's a line and rhythm pretty generally distributed all over Florida. It was sung to me by Charlie Jones on a railroad construction camp near Lakeland, Florida. Uh, that, I gathered that in 33, 1933. When I get in the and noise, I'm going to spread the news about the Florida boys. Shove it over. Hey, 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 you can't you line it. Oh, shack a lack a lack a lack a lack a lack a <clears throat> Can't you move it? Hey, 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 you can't you sigh? Eat him up, whiskers, and he won't shake. Eat him up, body like he won't fade. Now shove it over. Hey, 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 Railroads provided the infrastructure that allowed for the development of Florida tourism and brought increasing numbers of people here to establish permanent residence. Beginning in the 1880s, businessmen Henry Flagler and Henry Plant established extensive railways in Florida. In 1938, the luxury passenger train Orange Blossom Special inspired Irvin T. Rouse to write a song with the same name. In 1982, the legendary Florida troubadours Gamble Rogers and Will McLean performed the song at the Florida Folk Festival.
When the Great Freeze hit North and Central Florida in 1894, Julia Tuttle, known as the Mother of Miami, sent fragrant orange blossoms to Henry Flagler, showing him that South Florida was unaffected. Tuttle convinced Flagler to extend his operation to Miami, and by 1912, the Florida East Coast Railway extended all the way to Key West. The song, Where the Orange Blossoms Grow, was adapted from the 1917 song, Where the Morning Glories Grow, by Gus Kahn, Raymond Egan, and Richard Whitting. School children throughout Florida sang Where the Orange Blossoms Grow in the mid-20th century. The population of Florida exploded in the mid-20th century following the end of World War II. Tourism continued to be big business here, surpassing even the citrus and cattle industries. Songs of the Sunshine State portray Florida as a great place to live and the perfect vacation destination. Central Florida songwriter Ricky Sylvia captures that optimism in the Florida Song.
The 1960 film Where the Boys Are, set in Fort Lauderdale, is credited with making Florida the number one spring break destination for college students. In addition to Fort Lauderdale, Daytona Beach, Panama City, and Orlando have all been favorite destinations for spring breakers. Connie Francis sang the theme song to Where the Boys Are. Cypress Gardens in Lake Wales was one of Florida's original theme parks. Opened in 1936 by Dick Pope, Cypress Gardens featured botanical gardens, water skiers, and costumed characters. In 1963, Cypress Gardens was tied with the Grand Canyon as the number one tourist destination in the United States. As Walt Disney was planning to get into the theme park business, he sent his brother Roy to investigate Cypress Gardens, and Roy's report was very favorable. Construction on Walt Disney World began near Orlando in 1965, and it opened in 1971. Today, Walt Disney World has an average annual attendance of 58 million people.
The song, Lift Every Voice and Sing, became an anthem of the civil rights movement in the mid-20th century. It was written in Jacksonville as a poem by James Weldon Johnson in 1900 and set to music by his brother, John Rosamond Johnson. This inspirational Florida song is still known as the Black National Anthem.
Civil rights activist and educator Harry T. Moore traveled throughout Florida registering African Americans to vote. Moore fought for equality in education and the justice system. On Christmas night, 1951, a bomb exploded under the Moore home in Mims, Florida. Harry Moore and his wife Harriet both died from injuries sustained in the blast. Langston Hughes wrote the poem, The Ballad of Harry Moore, and it was set to music by Bernice Johnson Reagan. Harry T. Moore, his wife, and their two daughters all graduated from the historically black Bethune-Cookman College in Daytona. The Bethune-Cookman University Gospel Choir performs under the direction of Vertelis Kendrick. Beginning in the 1950s, Ray Charles became known for blending rhythm and blues, jazz, and country music into his own unique style. Ray Charles lost his sight by the age of five, and in the 1930s and 40s, the now legendary musician attended the Florida School for the Deaf and Blind in St. Augustine. Charles began his performing career in Orlando, Tampa, and Jacksonville. Yeah. 
Spanish-speaking people first arrived in Florida in 1513, and by 1565 they had established the first permanent European settlement in what would become the United States at St. Augustine. Cuban immigrants were part of that settlement. Since the revolution in 1959, the Cuban population of Miami has dramatically increased. Beginning in the late 1970s, Gloria Estefan and the Miami Sound Machine brought the music of South Florida to the world. The Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida is the launch site for all of America's manned missions into space. 
Singer Chris Call commemorates the past, present, and future of humankind's efforts in space with the song Rocket Boys. Explorers on the launch pad Sputnik already gone Push that little red button Cause now the race is on Seven had the right stuff To take up Mercury And Von Braun, he built the vessels To sail uncharted seas Kennedy pointed to Sky, so we're going to the moon Before the decades out We'll make that true I stand on the shores of Cape Canaveral Looking up to the blue Oh, let's see what those rocket boys can do Shepard took the first ride and went around the earth Being in the new frontier It felt like the day of birth Gemini took a walk outside Saturn V stood so tall Armstrong made the big leap for us all Stars and stripes are hanging above Footprints on the moon The eagles landed And oh my, what a view I stand on the shores of Cape Canaveral Looking up to the blue Oh, let's see what those rocket boys can do Viking crawled the red land And the shuttle took to fly The universe can't hide no more So ride, Sally, ride Challenger, Columbia Apollo, we remember you all Sometimes when you climb so high You've got to take a fall well, I look at the stars in the night sky Think how far we flew All the hopes and dreams now come true Stand on the shores of Cape Canaveral Looking up to the blue Let's see what those rocket boys can do there's nothing that those rocket boys can't do. There are many songs of the Sunshine State depicting Florida history that we did not have time to show you on this program. To watch extended versions of the performances we did see, go to our website at myfloridahistory.org. You've been watching Florida Frontiers presented by the Florida Historical Society. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ben Brokemarkle.
The Florida Historical Society presents Florida Frontiers is made possible in part by the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund and by... The historic Rossiter House Museum and Gardens is in the O'Galley section of Melbourne, Florida. Preserved as it was in the early 20th century, historic tours of the Rossiter House include antiques, artifacts, and family heirlooms, and the 1865 Houston Family Cemetery. The last resident of the home was successful businesswoman and philanthropist Caroline P. Rossiter. The historic Rossiter House Museum and Gardens is available for weddings and other special events. The Department of State Division of Cultural Affairs, the Florida Council of Arts and Culture, and the State of Florida.